We graduated in 2004, so this would have actually been January of 2004. And I was out that night at a friend's house, came back, and everything was in complete disarray. So stuff was off of our doors, we had decorations, those were down, all of our lights were on, our music was on. I immediately called my roommates, I had assumed maybe somebody came back and they didn't. I put everything back in place, cleaned up, and left again, only to come back about two hours later and find the exact same thing. As we were brushing our teeth, all of a sudden, a black, grayish figure kind of came across behind us. You could feel a breeze and you could see the temperature on the thermostat just start to drop down. Nothing necessarily happened the next day or the day after. It was a period of maybe three or four days. It could have even been a week. I remember lights turning on and off, music turning on and off, doors slamming, um, fire alarms going off, water turning on, um, just sort of little things like that. And then one day I walked in from class and as I looked into that common room, there was someone standing there. It was a grayish type figure, but an entire body, not just a part of it, distinguishable face and facial features. And I said, what are you doing here? And there was no answer, there was nothing. And as fast as I turned around to <laughs> run out of the room, um, that figure was gone. I would take the batteries out of the remote control for the TV and unplug it and it would still come on in the middle of the night. But again, we had no identification for this thing that was showing up. I was a student worker in the admissions office and we had mail delivered that was supposed to go to the treasurer's office. Handed him the mail and I turned around to walk out and as I did, there was a huge portrait on the wall. When I looked at it, I sobbed and the poor man sitting there had absolutely no idea why and I felt really bad about that to this day I feel really bad about that and um he kind of did one of these you know you all right <laughs> and I was like I see that face um I see that face in my room and he's like mm, that man's dead and I'm like yes I'm aware of that <laughs> and then I said you know who is that um and then he said and it was Oscar Bernheim they brought me in they're like so she's saying she sees this face and this and he was nice enough to have a conversation with it with me without telling me I was crazy we sort of set out on this expedition to find out more about him only to find out that he passed away in his home which was very near to where our room was on Valentine's Day he kept a rose garden for his wife and himself and he valued that greatly he had gone here um, he was also the treasurer of the bursar. You know, he was really important, obviously. One of my roommates, this was not me, experienced blood on her clothing when she opened um, her closet and um, took it immediately down, washed it, put it back in her closet, um, came back from class and there was blood on it again. Um, another one of my roommates, he clawed at her sheets in the middle of the night, so much so that she was screaming on the other side of the wall. That's, that was terrifying. And it got to the point when we knew his name, we would yell at him, you know, um, if my music would turn on in the middle of the night, I'd, you know, Oscar, knock it off, turn it off. Um, and he would, you know, so he, we had, we started to have this relationship with him. Other than our names, there was nothing that I could say that was discernible speech wise that I could get a gist of a sentence or anything like that. Um, but like I said, he had a thick accent and so it was very hard to understand him when he did speak. We did not sleep there on Valentine's Day. We left roses on the table and an open vase and set a video camera and walked out. Came back the next day and the flowers were in the vase. So obviously that was important. It did not get recorded. It, the video went um, to blank. The college contacted me about doing, they were doing a ghost tour for alumni and staff and they wanted to know if I would tell the story as part of the tour and what information I had to contribute to the tour. So um, that caused me to start digging again. I decided that I needed a picture of his tombstone and I needed to know where his cemetery plot was. I stood in front of whatever stone I was standing at. I said, obviously you don't want your story told. So I'm gonna stand right where I am and I'm gonna wait for the wind to blow. And there was a flag on the plot in front of me. And I said, whichever direction that flag goes is the direction I'm gonna walk and I'm going back to my car and this is over. And so I waited about a minute or two, the wind blew, whatever direction was to my left, which is what it was, and I turned and I took two steps and it was in front of me. His plot was there, his wife's, um, his son who had died when he was a baby, and then there was one that had fallen over. That winter, I went to um, put a rose on his stone, um, for Valentine's Day and I stepped back to take a picture and what it showed was that there was this ball, maybe yay big, 
this thing moved from the tree up over his stone, sort of to the right, and then jogged its way back and then stopped on top of it. In the spring, I went back. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna clean this up. And a huge tree limb fell down from the tree and landed on my feet. I don't know what he was trying to say, except leave it all alone. I did really want something to be named after him. It was such a huge part of what this college was at its foundation. And he played so many roles on so many levels. People looked up to him, they respected him. I'm hoping that at some point we can get his story told on a broader scale and that he will have a place on this campus that he deserves. Um, another part of the digging that we did was to go find, um, there's a, and on the church pew, there, the side of the pews had names of people who contributed to the college or were part of the college. Um, we were told, <clears throat> excuse me, that they were up above um, in the attic of Brown. There sat stacks and stacks of um, the ends of the church pews. Um, they were covered in dust and um, except for one, which was his. And the name and only the name was rubbed clean. So, you know, you, everyone believes something different. You talk about the powers of the universe, like what would have made that be the one, right? I don't know. I just know that there are things that are stronger than us in this world <laughs> um, that, that, you know, maybe help move things around. I, I don't know, but I know we're not alone. <laughs> I've, see, I've seen proof we're not.